I'm Tony Steffen from Oregon State University Extension Service. I'd like to talk today about the small but hot compost system. My favorite method for creating this hot system is a cage. You can use wire or plastic fencing that's 36 inches tall, cut to about 11 feet long. This gives you the right dimensions to contain that one cubic yard of material that's necessary to keep a hot compost pile working correctly. Now I like to put a piece of wood on each end of my caging material, one to the inside of the cage and one to the outside of the cage material. This gives me the ability to place them next to each other overlapping, which effectively creates a lock for my cage. Some of the tools you're going to need besides the cage are a device to turn and move the material. I like this spading fork. An old pair of hedge clippers works really well for chopping up material into little pieces. Water is an essential for the compost pile, so you need to have it handy. Of course, we have to have multiple buckets or containers to uh, carry the compost material in. Our compost system is really dependent on the material you put into it. It takes two containers of browns to one container of green to create the good working system. Now browns have the carbon which brings the energy for the microbes. Here's a short list of browns that might be in your backyard or household. Greens contain nitrogen. The nitrogen has the amino acids that are that's required to build the microbial body and increase their reproduction. This rapid increase in microbial population through reproduction is actually what heats up the center of that compost pile. That heat is what uh, breaks down the material. Now that we know the science of a compost pile, let's build one. And we're going to take one of our brown materials. You might see some little green leaves in here. These are tree leaves, so they will turn into browns. I'm going to add that first bucket. I'm going to spread it out so that it pretty thin layer on the bottom. I like to start with browns because they give that bulking layer which helps the uh, air pass from the ground to the into the pile quite easily. You're looking for a chimney effect, actually, where the air comes through and fills the pile with air so the microbes have plenty of moisture and air to work. After my first layer bucket of browns, I add my greens. And again, I spread them out. them throughout the entire area of the bin. And I'm going to follow with water. Even though they're greens and they have their own moisture, as I'm collecting material, these greens kind of sit down, sit around for a while and they do dry out. My compost pile really needs to be 40 to 60 percent moisture in order to give that wet uh, layer on all the materials for the microbes to, to move around. You could think of them as being kind of in a little swimming pool. No fun swimming without water. And then I add another layer of my browns. Whoops, that didn't spread out very nicely. Good thing I have my spading fork here. I can spread it out. 
my browns. I really like, uh, it's really important not to use a piece that's much bigger than your little finger. That's where the pruning, uh, the hedge trimmers come in. You can chop up these little pieces, but much bigger than that, you can't chop. We got our last layer of brown, or our next layer of brown. And I'm gonna add some more water. Again, I'm looking for that 40 to 60% uh, volume of water in this pile. You really have to add quite a bit. I'm probably not adding quite enough for this demonstration. All right, here comes another layer of browns. Continue this all the way up till my cage is full. Alternating browns and greens with water. Once it gets full, well, I'm not going to have enough material today, and you may not either, but allow yourself a week or so to get this bin filled all the way. Once you get it filled, at the end of that first week, you can start the countdown for uh, the heating and cooling cycle. Layer of greens. Go. Spread them out. And again, I need to follow with water. is going to go on until I've totally filled this bin. Like I said, it might be a week. But once I've filled it, we're going to go on to the next step. So right now we're going to pretend that this bin is full. I like this system really well because um, once it's ready to, once it's set here for a week and raised in temperature, to 131 to 158 degrees, then it's going to start falling in temperature and it's time to turn it. I like this because all I have to do is remove the cage. Set it right next to it. And now I'm going to start filling in material, starting from the outside edges and top and just filling back my cage like that, alternating with water. I'm going to do this about four times so that, and, and each time it's going to raise up temperatures to between 131 and 158, and then it's going to cool down. It'll take approximately a week to do this. So in about four weeks, I've turned my compost pile four times. At the end of that fourth week, you're probably not achieving that 131 degree temperature and it's time to stop turning. And once you stop turning, you know, let your compost pile sit two to three months before it's ready. It's got to finish. It'll be ready in about two to three months to be used in the garden. This has been 
small space compost, hot composting. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you very much for joining me today.